for the players, it's a huge deal. Like they, it, they've all lived together for, you know, if you're in college, you're living with these guys and you're around them the entire time. Um, so they all want to win. Jack Taglione, who they're, you know, people will play off his name and because he does hit the ball really far and throw really hard. So it starts basically on the, it's like the middle of February. So we're, we're getting up near college baseball season. Um, I believe it's like February 17th, 18th, something like that. Usually at the beginning of the season, they usually play like a couple of out of conference schedules, like smaller teams, and then there'll be weekend games. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, usually teams save their best starters for Friday night. Friday night starters are the biggest ones. Saturday starts on a Friday and goes through Sunday. And usually most teams set it up that Friday is their biggest starter. Um, it's just usually it's like the, the number one starter for a team usually pitches on Friday. But usually it's the same college and a lot of times it's from the same conference. So it may be two SEC teams playing or two ACC teams playing. Um, and then they do the, that's how they determine the conference standings. Yeah, so it goes through June and uh, with the College World Series, especially in if you're an SEC or ACC school, they tend to get the most fans. Also, if you, anybody in the Pacific, also in the South, in the Southwest too, they're they're great baseball climates as well. Um, SEC tends to generally the last bunch of years have the champion, so uh, that they it's hard to argue against the SEC. This year, Wake Forest is the number one team preseason, and they're an ACC team. It's based on, it's like um, basically all the college sports. It's based on just a selection committee, looking at their record, looking at the conference they played in. They look at the strength of schedule and uh, and stuff like that and, and pick the best teams. And then they're all seated. There's a regional, and then there's a super regional, and then the College World Series where the top teams play. So they all have to battle in a tournament to get out of it and then the top eight teams go to the College World Series. Yeah, it, it gives them a little, so they it is and isn't a big deal. It's a big deal, at least for the players, it's a huge deal. Like they, it, they've all lived together for, you know, if you're in college, you're living with these guys and you're around them the entire time. Um, so they all want to win. I mean, some of them may try to protect you know, themselves for the for the, their professional opportunities but not a lot like a lot of them play um paul skeens last year he knew he was going to be the you know make a lot of money but he he definitely pitched and did really well so Brett louder did too um for for wake they pitched against each other and neither wanted to come out of the game and they were both going to make a lot of money so they do um it means a lot to the players and it also means a lot then to the teams and fans because they get to see what that player's made of. It may not make them more money, but it develops more fans for players because you're able to see them and, and everybody likes a guy, like, likes a player who competes on the biggest stage. All the time it's mixed up different colleges and there are a bunch of different leagues. Um, so when you're a college player, because you have the summer off, it generally it's a competitive thing. There's a Cape Cod league, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of other leagues too underneath that, that uh, you know in different regions. So you'll go play against teams that are more associated with the towns. They're usually in a small town um, in in this specific. So the Cape Cod League would be up in the Northeast. There are other leagues in the in the Southeast and uh, and elsewhere that you may play in. That uh, you'll see people skyrocket sometimes their draft stock because they had a really good summer league because uh, they're playing against the best pitchers and the best players day in and day out so it becomes a big deal so often like not that often two-way players in college you'll have occasionally two-way players in college we have um there's a big one right now for university of florida who's one of the top teams in the country jack taglione who they're you know, people will play off his name and call him like, you know, Jack Tani or something like that because he does hit the ball really far and throw really hard. 
Um, his command, yeah, he could do better command-wise probably as a pitcher, but as a hitter, he's got a lot of power. So big dude who throws hard. Not a ton, though. Like, you'll see... They're like Buster Posey when he was in college played both ways a little bit. Uh, Matt Wieters did for Georgia Tech. Um, a lot of times it's not necessarily full time. Paul Skeens, who was the number one pick. So that's where you got it. So Paul Skeens was drafted, started out as a catcher and played two way for a little bit. But then last year for LSU was a pure pitcher. And he won't be a two-way player in the, in the majors just because he's such a, you know, throws 102 and has really good command and is going to be a pitcher for a long time. You know, he's going to have to get used to very high. These guys have been playing against the highest level of competition here too. So it'll be a good challenge, a good way to develop yourself, to be in college, get your education, play good baseball in a fun environment and not have to starve.